I'm with Graham Emerson, a pastor from Church in the Barn in Penrith, and we're here in the Holy Land. Graham, what have you been doing here in the Holy Land? We've been travelling all over the place, seeing some wonderful sights, meeting some wonderful people, just praising the Lord and just seeing where Jesus walked. And it's really opened up our eyes to just, you can picture the scene now when you read the Bible and, and look around and, and see in your mind where, where Jesus walked and the sort of things he was talking about. It just opens your, your eyes a little bit more. Have you been involved in ministry here? Yeah, we've done a bit. We have done a football school in Nazareth for a few hours up there and we did a table tennis competition as well i just happened to win that one but uh, <laughs> yeah that, that couldn't be helped <laughs> and also uh, in here in bethlehem at hope school we did some coaching sessions we did a couple of assemblies and we just shared the gospel uh, with those people and we met a few people on the way that we've chatted to about the lord and that's that's been good to do that mm. uh, now you brought some youth over are they from your church and is it important for your youth to come here to israel Oh, I, I think it's been a wonderful experience for them uh, to see. Yeah, we brought some youth. Well, they're in their 20s. We brought my son, Joel. He came for the first time. And Yari, our youth worker, and a guy called Paul. And the wonderful Marsden family that run Sports Reach in the Preston, Lancashire area. They travel a lot, but it's the first time uh, in the Holy Land. And so it really benefited them. So it, it, it's been good to work with them as well. So you would recommend young people coming to the Holy Land? Absolutely, absolutely. I, th I think you can just explain things so much better. They get an understanding not only of what Jesus did in the Bible, but the, the tensions that are out here as well and how people feel about the current situation and also how the Christians deal with that and about the forgiveness and, the, uh, and their hope in spite of all the, the difficulties is, is great for them to, to meet the locals as well. Um, so will this inspire them to read their Bible more, do you think? Absolutely. I, th I think as we've been reading our Bible on the way along, we've just seen the places um, that we've been reading about. And I think they'll go home and they they'll read more and they'll want to read more because they'll, they'll know the places that they've been. Now, um, have you been visiting sites, but also getting to know the people as well? Yeah, yeah. When, with the places we've stayed, like here in Bethlehem or, or Bechala with the Kasabri family. It's been good to, to get to know them, not only what they like, but the, the food that they eat, which is a bit different to ours. And up in Nazareth, we had the, the same experience with a wonderful family up there as well. So yeah, we, we love me meeting the locals. E even last night in near Manger Square, we talked to a few young people as best we could. The introduction is always to do with football because it's like a, a global language, mm. but we were able to share a, a little bit of what, what we were doing as well. So it's, it's good to, to to give a little hope and point people in the right direction. Uh, now you're here in Bejala and you're not staying in a hotel, but you're staying with a Palestinian Christian family. How has that been? Oh, it's been fantastic. I mean, it's very different over here because well, the Kasabris, the, the family live on the, the second floor. And then they've, they've built, it's, I mean, it's almost finished. The next floor up is Moose's flat. That's the bit we're staying in. Yeah. And then Elias, his flat will be above that. I mean, it's a building site at the moment, but that will be his. Ferris, the youngest boy, will go down to the original ground floor flat. So you can see all, how all the families live together and they want to live together yeah. because they're, they're so close. And I think that's something that's missing in, in Britain. On, on the whole, that family connection has been lost when people move off to various parts of the country. So, but I think it's really important. It, it knits them together, and, and I think it's important for church as well. When, when, when a family goes to church, it's a big group gathering of, of families together. We had a wonderful meal today at the, the church as well. So do you see families very important here in Bethlehem? Yeah, I, I think even more so than in, than in Britain. And they're very close, and they, they live literally on top of each other. I, I don't know, I haven't asked what, it's, what it w would be like, because none of the boys are married yet, but when they, when they bring a wife into a new family, I don't know what that'll be like. I'll, I'll, I'll ask those questions later. <laughs> and have you been introduced to all the Middle Eastern food as well? Oh, it's brilliant. I can't remember the names, but there's like one, one that goes upside down. Yeah. So they, they, they make it in a pan and then they tip it upside down and pour it out. And what we've loved, and I experienced this last time, uh, was just getting some bread, some flatbread, and dipping it in oil, and then dipping it in this spice called satar. Yeah. And I remember when it came six years ago, I took some of it home with me, and be, I went around a few schools, and some of the, the primary school kids had, had that experience. I absolutely love the stuff. So I don't know where you get satar in Britain, but it, it, it's delicious. Yeah. Mm. Now you are a pastor. Has God finished with Israel? 
Absolutely not. I think as we read from Scripture, God has a plan for them. As we read Romans 9, 10, and 11, I mean, it's in God's plan, and we don't always understand it, but he, he's, it says he's provoking the Jews to jealousy. You know, when, when us Gentiles re- receive Christ and his spirit without the works of the law, I think he's, he's provoking them to jealousy, but he's doing a work amongst the Palestinians. As far as I understand, here in Bethlehem, 30% of the people, of Palestinian people, are, are Christians. So there's a lot of them around. The churches are are thriving from the ones I've seen and it's really it was really good to meet with them but God's definitely not finished with this land and his plans and purposes and I think as we read from scripture some of it's a bit horrific in the in the scripture but but there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel of of Jesus return and as as we know he's coming to the mount of olives to return and to restore the world to how it should have been in the garden of eden now, you've only been here for a very short time, but how do you see the Christian community here in Bethlehem? Well, it, you know, it's, it's vibrant. You know, there's, there's a lot of Christians around, maybe even more so than in, in Britain. They, they do, they're honest with their struggles here in, in Palestine with how they feel the Israelis are, are taking land, but they say they don't hate anybody. And, and I think that's really good as Christians that they don't hate, but they don't like some of the actions of the other side. But I've also seen from the King's Kids in the past that young Jewish people and young Palestinian people get into together they can get a better understanding of each other and learn to love one another with with that understanding and now you've been working with palestinians so what is your prayer for them my prayer is that they love their enemy i think it's really easy to love somebody who can love you back and i think especially thinking about young people who are courting there's there's those gooey feelings and and i think that's god given and it's nice and to tolerate somebody who disagrees with you and love them is another step up but to to love your enemy is it's the highest form of love. It, it's the, the love that Jesus showed to the people who hung, hung him on a cross. He, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. So my prayer is that they'll be able to, when people hate them, they will return that with love. And I, I believe that love overcomes hate because God is love. And that can change the society, can't it? I believe so. And, and it's so much easier said than done. Mm. And But my prayer is that they will have the strength of Jesus to love back those who hate them or who take things from them um, and that love will overcome in the end. Are you hoping to bring more and more young people out here to the Holy Land? I hope so. I really, really hope so. It's This has been a, a trial run. I'd really love to bring some young people who have just finished their GCSEs back in Britain, just so they can see this for themselves. So there's things I would do slightly differently, or if I had a different group. But that's my hope. L- the Lord willing, if every year or every other year I can bring them out. I've made lots of lovely contacts this time, and places I know where I can go that would be suitable for them. So that would be my hope. We'll pray about it when we get home and find out for sure. Do you feel a little bit like Joshua coming into the promised land with a group every time? <laughs> a little bit, we're, we're, but we're not going to storm the walls of Jericho or anything like that. We're just going to uh, try and love the people that we come across, try and give them the same experiences of meeting the locals, hearing their opinions. And we're so blessed in Britain to, to not have that struggle. And I think when young people hear, hear about those things that they go through to see the places where they live, they'll appreciate Britain so much more. And also just for them to see where Jesus walked as well and his, his daily routine or seeing the views that he had or when he talked about the, the stones of the temple or you know the wheat in the field. Just those types of parables will come to life. Mm. Uh, now, a few years ago, you also had a young Palestinian Christian come to your church, didn't you, in the UK? Yes, we did. The, the house I'm staying in, just now, where we're doing this interview, uh, Musa came over four years ago. It was a real privilege to show him around. We are building our own church, and we got him to help a lot. He did a lot of painting on this particular wall, and uh, we took him up as far as Scotland, or only as far as Gretna. We showed him a bit of Manchester, showed him the Lake District, and it was really good to he- hear his experiences, and also just to give him a different p- perspective of somewhere else in the world, because I think here in Bethlehem, they're kind of hemmed in. They're not allowed out into Israel. If they want to fly out, they have to go to Jordan. So just for for them to see, and for Musa in particular, to see something different, I think was a blessing for him. And I know, I know he appreciates it. And we, we had a lot of fun together as well. What's your church website address for people who'd like to know more about what you do? 
or it's churchinthebarn.org.uk if I've got that right. But if you if you Google Church in the Barn Penrith Cumbria, you'll soon find it. We've got our sermons on there. We've got all the stuff that we do. We're a lively church. God is at work. A lovely family church, and I'm missing them. They're meeting probably just about now on this Sunday evening, but we'll see them next Sunday. Okay, Graham. Thank you very much. Thank you.